seek down into your people and their life will never remain the same again. I ask you, Father, this word will cause breakthrough in our lives and you will change our story forever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can please be seated. I will be preaching or teaching this morning on the cause and the cure to temptation. The causes and the cure to temptation. The first thing I want to ask, what is temptation? Temptation is a trial to derail you from God. Temptation is a test from the devil so that you can fall away, so that you can doubt God, so that you can backslide, so that you don't have interest in the things of God any longer. Temptation is different from persecution. Persecution is physical torture on you either because of your belief or your faith or because you serve God. So you can be persecuted torture, blackmail, beating, and thrown away, and cast down, in prison. That is persecution. So, but temptation is what comes to you. It may not necessarily be the torture, the imprisonment, the beating or being killed, but it is aimed at which? At you backsliding, losing interest in the things of God, being cool, falling away from, the, from God. Now, the point I want to bring out is this. What are the causes of temptation? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, you see what happened in the time of Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 says, Now the subtle was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You could see here that there was subtlety of Satan. So the causes of temptation is Satan. Satan is the architect of being tempted and the purpose of that temptation is for you to fall away from God and disbelieve God. Now from where we have just read, you discover that Satan came to test, test the, the only two existing human beings on the world, Adam and Eve. They came to try, they came to tempt them. Why? To disbelieve God. Not to trust God. To doubt God. To doubt the truthfulness of God. To disbelieve the power of God. Today, we could see that the same thing is happening everywhere in the world. Now, devil comes in to question the things of God in your life. To ask you, do you truly believe going to church will be of any useful to you? Devil will come to tempt you. Do you actually believe that even the church you are going... You, do you have any hope? 
Do you have any future? Do you have any destiny in the church you are going? Why don't you go to Illuminati? Why don't you join secret court? Why don't you go to drugs? Why don't you follow the things of the world and make it quick and fast? These are the way the devil will tempt you. The devil will make you to disbelieve the fact that church or God cannot help you. The devil will make you to believe or feel that you cannot get married in the church. You must go to the club, the club house, party house. That is where the guy is and you can easily get married there. Devil always come to tempt you or try you to make you feel disbelief that God can heal you. I uh, say, do you think you can be healed? I don't think you can be healed. Did such and such person not die? If that person die of the same sickness, he's a church person, he's even a leader, he's even a pastor, he's even a prayer warrior, he's even a holy person, do you think God can heal you? That is the devil. Anytime you see such thing, that is called the tempter. He will tempt you of those things so that you can doubt God. And the Bible makes us understand that it comes subtly. It only comes with the appearance as if it's a Satan. The tempter, which is the devil, don't come as if it's a, it's a Satan. He comes with showing you some kind of love. For example, it will make you to admire something that is physical. It will flash something to you and make that thing look beautiful. Very subtle. He flagged the fruit, fruit for, the, for the woman. And because women like flashy things, he decided to go through the woman, not the man. Because man may not give too much attention to that. So it was easy for him to go through the woman. Because flashy thing, beautiful thing, good looking, multicolor things. Now, so, what the devil did is to make sure to paint that thing to be good, subtle. Paint, the devil will paint a bad thing to be good in order to get your attention. And once he gets your attention, he gets your mind, and that is the temptation, and you backslide it. Some other time, it will give you a suggestion, a thought. He will give you a suggestion. Why don't you do this thing? What is wrong if you do this thing? After all, even those who do it, they are free. Not in, not in harm. Nothing is dangerous. Uh, that person is even doing it. Is that person not a prayer warrior? He's doing this thing. So wh why don't you do it? Is that person not a pastor? He's doing this thing and nothing is happening. Why don't you just go ahead and do it? Now, for the fact that a prayer warrior, a pastor, an evangelist, someone who you think is holy, is doing something bad, does not make you do it. But the, de de the, the devil will tempt you. If he did it and he succeeded, then I can do it and make you feel okay. And paint that thing to be good, lovely, sweet, good looking, attractive, to lure you. In fact, the cause of temptation is to lure you into it. Now, temptation comes as a result of our selfish desire and lust and enticement. Those are the causes of temptation. I said number one, it question your validity of God's word. It also comes in a subtle, subtle way. Then also, as I also said now, temptation comes as a result of selfish desire or lust or enticement. In James chapter 1 verse 13. James chapter 1 verse 13. Here the Bible says, Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bring it forth death. Now, I want you to understand the difference between temptation and test or examine. God can examine you. You can also examine yourself. God can also test you, but he wouldn't tempt you. Now, 
test is, for example, God allows something, certain things to happen to you to know what is your makeup. To know if you will deny him or not deny him. Now, for example, he can allow you to be sacked from job, from your job. But God will never allow a temptation to come to his children. Temptation are always from who? Satan. But tests, God sometimes allow tests. For example, the test could be you lost your job. The test could be you failed your examination. The test could be you did not get the admission you wanted. The test could be your pastor discipline you or pastor suspend you or pastor expel you or, or, or whatever. Or it could be the test could be the choir master or the choir mistress or who is in charge tell you you cannot, you know, you cannot do this. Now, recently, some few weeks, I, I screened some things, few, few things to the choir, and I say that person is going out of the choir, that person is going out of the choir, it's going out of workers, workers, and all that. There's, there's this temptation, because uh, they, I do the screening, and I leave, send, them to, send them out, out of the choir, and send them out of some department. I say they will no longer be in any department. Now, that is, it, that is to show we, we, we discipline, to be sure everything is going to work well. But the issue here on ground is this. The test is hard. It can even make you to decide, ah, pastor said you can no longer be in the choir. You can no longer be in the worker. Okay, I'm no more going to, going to church again. Or I am changing church. Good and fine, no problem about that. Church is open anywhere. You can go to anywhere. But the issue is this. Is that is the test to show your humility. If you are faithful, if you are honest, if you are truthful, by the time you are passed through those experiences of giving yourself and you, you wash, you cleanse, you, you, those things, why they stop you, you overcome it, then what happens? They cannot bring you back. Well, because you cannot, you have to go. Now, hear this. You could be tested by your husband. God allowed it. But God did not allow temptation to come you on your way. Oh, well, he, he is God aware of it. Yes, he's aware, but he's not the one that allowed it. He's not the one that is tempting you. He's not the one that give you the permission. So, but well, your husband could be against you. It could be a text. A, a, a test. Your wife could be against you. Even your own children can be against you. Even your own father can be against you on some issue. Now, it could be, God may know it, what is the test? Maybe it could be no food, no money for transportation. And you ask God, say, God, give me money for food. Give me money for school fees. Give me money for house rent. And God is listening to you, but never did anything about it. No money. And nobody ever gives you the money. God is testing you to know whether you will be angry, whether man gives you the money or not. You, whether you be angry, whether I release the money, is a test. Or to you or not. God will be watching you. Whether you put your trust on a man to give you the money for the house rent, or you put your trust on a man to give you money for that school fees, or not. And, or you put on your, tr your trust in him. If you were going to pass the test, is when nobody gives you the money, and you expect it, the money to come from a dear friend, a trusted Christian brother or whatever, and, or even the church or the pastor, and he did not give you the money. And yet you see stand. And you say, God, I believe God, and I believe you only. I don't believe in any man, you. And you put your trust in God. God will still, still wait whether, they through, whether it's true. Your trust is good. Your belief is true. And that is a test. And you discover after two, three, four months, Nobody comes to give you money. You are passing through the hungry. You are passing through the no accommodation. They even throw your things outside. Nobody came to help. God will actually make, sometimes make people not to even see you to test whether you are genuine or true. Whether you are true. And they throw your things. Nobody accepted you. Rain beat you or something. Then it is after God sees the genuity of your heart. Then we now can say yes. Now I know. Just like I spoke to who? Job. 
say now i know then he will then come in some of us say god came in too late that's your problem and by the time you say god is coming in too late you complain say god you're failed god look at you and say you're failed that's nice test but that's not what i'm talking about now god tests everyone god Test everyone to know what is in your heart, what is in your mind, whether you truly believe or you, tr you, you, have, you have confidence on man or confidence in him, whether your mind and your service, sometimes you may be serving God. You may be serving God like either in the ushering department or choir department and you do something and you do something and you even lost money. Or you are producing cassette or CD or something, and you even lost money. Or nobody even came in to even support you from, the, from maybe at the start. Or somehow, with your prayer warrior, you fast 40 days and 49. And after 40, fasting 40 days and 49, when you think that God is with you, they say your uncle just died. They say your mother just died. After a long fasting, when you thought that with that fasting, the anointing of God should bring healing to everybody. And the healing did not come. God is looking at you. What will be your makeup? What will be your makeup? And you came to church, and God and everybody is receiving healing, and you are healed. Uh, the, the next person is healed. You, the person is even a sinner. He gets healed, and you are not a sinner. And God did not heal you. God is looking at you. What is your makeup? Is that is a test? Whether you will stand or you will not stand. Now, friends, when you are tested by the Lord, don't say, don't, don't give up because that test will yield a better benefit from you, the Lord. But that's not what we're talking about. It's the temptation. Now, from where we have read, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted in any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when loss has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Sometimes the test, the temptation, come from our lustful desire. Sometimes lust for women. Some people cannot control themselves. Sometimes they lust for women. They can't see any woman unscared. They run after them. They can't control themselves. Sometimes it's a lust for men. They cannot just control themselves. They lost for any man. They just they can't they can't even hold themselves once they see a man that is tall and huge. They want to go after the man in any form, in any way. That is because of the enticement. And some women too, some men too, once they see anyone that is fair in complexion or that is black and the blackness is shiny, or he has big fat, he has plenty of fat in the front or in the back or by the, by the side here, they always, they, they just go crazy. Why? Because of the fat the woman is carrying on the chest or the fat is carrying on the back or the fat they carry on the what? On the side. They go crazy. That is lost. That is what is destroying them. And because the women knows that the men are lustful and enticed with plenty of fat here, plenty of fat here and plenty of fat here, if they don't even have the fat, they buy extra fat, man means fat, and put it on the chest. They buy extra man means fat and put it at the back. And they buy man means fat and put it on the side. And wear cloth to reveal the fatness. See me, I have fat here. See me, I have fat here. Can't you see me? I have fat here too. And it's like that. Now, that, that's because they have not discovered that the people are enticed and induced by the number of flesh they have on that part of the body F friend don't let the flesh deceive you don't let the fat deceive you they're all good there's nothing wrong with it if god give you praise god but don't let it become a snare to someone hallelujah now the issue here is that the the devil because the devil knows you like those kind of fat he will make your eyes see those kind of fat and be enticed and be deceived and you begin to lose your control of yourself. You lose control of yourself, you lose your money, you lose your time, you lose your family. Now, that is the danger of it. You lose your money, you lose everything around. Now, in the issue of this, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. 
For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all place point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. You see, temptation, sometimes we get tempted with thoughts, dangerous thoughts, uncontrollable thoughts. Your mind will be wandering here and then, in the day and the night. You thought, different thoughts. You, you want, as soon as you are rejecting this thought, another thought is coming. As soon as you are rejecting this thought, you see another thought is coming. And in the night, you just don't, you just can't control your thought. Now, that is the devil tempting you. So, you should be able to master your thoughts. Or master the control of your thinking. Those dangerous thoughts that is coming, or let me use them, those suggestions coming, they are there to ensnare you. Multitudes of thoughts make you enslaved or put you into bondage. When the thoughts become so much, you now explode. You now what? Go into explosion. Now you see today, uh, a lot of people are uh, going to what they call uh, uh, things like uh, pornography, uh, lesbianism, and all that. Now I, I, I there was there's something I don't even encourage. I, I make some few studies and make research, and I discover that I don't even encourage even married people to even go into uh, watching uh, pornography, even in the sense of the, even even if it means to build their uh, their relationship life with their wife. You know, I, I used to think before that it could help to build people's relationship. But I just, when I make some few studies, I discover it's not helpful to some people. Because if A is able to stand, B will not stand. So I say it's not helpful. Married woman or not married woman. Married man or not married man. Or single ladies or not single ladies. Pornographies and blue films, adult films. It's not part of... Don't, don't, let it go out of your phone. Let it go out of your uh, tablet or computer, whatever. And don't even buy it. I don't even watch it. Now, and, and, and some films too are not really helpful. Some of those films are suggestive. They are inducing. They are enticing. Some of those films will make you to fall into dangerous activities. And things that will not give you suggestions. Some of those films, do away with them. Whether well, married or no married. Because some people have done that even with their wife in their house. They watch some of those things in their house. Instead of them to do maybe what they see with their wife in their house, they take their key and go outside and go to the street. Please, not, whether married or no married, pornography, blue film, all those things are not necessary for our lives. Now, because they will bring you suggestion and enticement and induce you and make you to do things you really don't want to do, which is not your mind. It will force you to compare because temptation comes like a force. It will give you suggestions. Some people today, they will, they will tell them, eh, eh, who, who is that after all? What is the use? Don't stay. Just Why going to church? Stay in the house and listen to television. The devil has got you already. You stay in the house and watch television, and after you finish for the day, say, after I've had God's word. Is it not the same word of God? We only listen to church. But the devil has tempted you to disbelieve the word of God that says, do not forsake the gathering together of the children of God. And the Bible also says, on the first day of the week, when you gather, when you meet, the devil has made you to forsake it and allow you to watch television and stay in the house and say you have given, you have served the Lord already. So you see, tempt temptation may come in different ways. All we have to do is to avoid it. All our what is to avoid it. Temptation, major way is to make you sin. The, the purpose of temptation is to make you sin. It makes you to stop church. It makes you to stop prayers. It makes you to stop fasting. He will tell you all the fasting you'll be fasting all this way. What, what has he given you to stop fasting? Temptation will make you to feel that, well, all my labor can be in vain. And what is it? Do something else. You know, and devil, temptation will give you, make you to feel that, well, well, I can do anything to get anything by way. Go to, uh, go on, go to, go and do rituals. And some people in the church can go and do rituals because they want to get it by all means. And say, after all, I will keep my life to Christ. I will pay tithe after all. Nobody is interested in your tithes if you are a ritualist, if you are involved in a, a diabolical means, if you are involved in satanic activities, illuminati or whatever. Nobody is interested in it. What we are interested in is in your soul, your spirit, your mind. Do you know when God, when God tests some people? There are people today who God tests them, they fail. 
God tests them with a small salary. Maybe they work in a company. Or a small gift and test them with, with, with 10,000 naira. You say, I'm a degree holder. How come I'm getting a job of only 10,000 naira for a month? 10,000 salary. salary. I'm, God. And that is a test you are receiving to test whether you are humble. Because you are a degree holder. God now gave you a job of what? 10,000 naira. The first test, God will say, well, I want to watch whether I will take it. Whether he's humble enough to take it. If you're humble and you take it, God will give you mark. Say, good and fine. Then, God will now test you again to know, with that 10,000, will he be able to pay his tight? If at the end of the month, with that 10,000, it's not enough for you to even pay for your transport money or house rent or don't talk, not, not, not even feeding. And God see this, God see, see you with your degree as a degree holder. When you're supposed to earn at least 120,000 naira and you are earning 10,000, God will test you. Is she or is he able to pay the tithe of a 10,000 naira, 1,000 naira? And when God sees you, you take your tithe of 1,000 and you pay it. You get your two marks. And God said, yes, this man, even if I give him a job of or a contract or a business of 20 million, he can bid. Because if you can pay that one, you can pay higher. Then God will now say, okay, let me increase it and try with 20, 30,000. And he now increase you and give you that job of 30,000. And you eventually, you remove your 3,000 naira and pay. God said, yes. I'm saying. That's how God will begin testing you test you because when he tests you and you were able to pay your tithes then you got your mark then god can start promoting you and sometimes it is something like giving or giving in the house of god maybe they say give for me church or give to aguan romi or goningora church or give to give seed of it no i've given my offering already I don't have, I don't, I can that's, uh, that's what they usually do. They will, come, they, will, they will just want to collect our money. And God will say, oh, you are failed. You are failed. This one are failed. Or when the pastor is preaching and, um, and, um, and you're looking at the time and they say, we usually close um, uh, 11.30 and if they close 12 o'clock, oh, I know, we have closed. Pastor has come. He has come. Jew has come. If it's Gabriel, 12 Eleven thirty, we have closed. Jew has come. We can close any time now. Oh, that God has tested you, and you are failed. If the day Gabriel preaches and he see twelve o'clock, Gabriel, ah, today was wonderful, but the time you have failed. You have failed because in your place of work you don't give time. In your house you don't give time, and God, the Bible says, God is a jealous God. And you give time and look at time. You have failed. You have lost mark. And no wonder when people do some things and God closes his eyes. You wonder why is God closing his eye to A or B. It's because your mark is not enough. You don't have credit. You have F9 or F. How can it be promoted when you have F? God marks. Don't you know God is an accountability God? God keeps account of everything you do. How many of you know that? Everything you do on earth, God gives, gives account. Your thoughts, your, your thoughts, your, the way you think, God gives account. The Bible says, on the last day, everything you think about, everything you imagine, everything you, every action, He says you will give account of everything because everything is written down. And the, thing, the issue is that on earth, you reap everything you think, everything you act, everything you motion, you receive it on earth on earth before the last day the record is still kept the last day but you reap it on that's why i say some of you say hey, my time eh, my i can't give offering or oh, uh, i want to build church eh, we don't really give eh, they are giving too much eh, they are this one all those complaints like, god is putting it down don't worry god is putting it down because it's not it's not it's not pastor it's not you that is going to reap the reward it's you that is going to reward that's why we should not lead to the temptation if the devil is trying to tempt you Keep it short. Try to overcome it. How do you overcome it? You reject the devil. You reject the devil. You turn it out. You throw it away. You pull it off. You turn it off, off from your life. That's how to reject the devil. You change your mind when it starts giving you thoughts. Thoughts, dangerous thoughts, evil thoughts, immoral thoughts, uh, suggestion of the devil is one of the ways the devil subtly tempts you and makes you to lose your foot. What? Then you become cold in the things of God. 
The things of God will not be interesting to you again. The things of God will not be, you will not catch fire again. The, the, the urge, you, 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 when you come to church, you, you will be coming to church anyhow. Before, when the tempter was far from you, when the devil was far from you, you know how you run to church. You know how you want to come to church on time. But when the tempter has got to you, um, any time I go to church, church will wait for me. I'm not going, going there to wait for church. Because you are going there for somebody, because of somebody, you lose focus. You are falling already to temptation. That is backsliding. You are falling. Because you no longer value the things of God. You no longer take the things of God so serious. The tempter has got you. Satan has tempted you. It comes subtly. And look at how the tempter tempted David. A great king. A great king. Tempted and fall into with your Uriah's, the wife of Uriah. And fall into immorality. Look at how the devil tempted the strongest man, Samson. Samson. Don't expect to sleep in the lap of Delilah and wake up in the kingdom of God. Yes, she's, he slept in the lap of Delilah and he got what he's looking for. Look at how the temptation came to all those people in the Bible. Time. Look, in the contemporary time. So we, we should be able to use our intellect our common reasoning, our, our common reasoning to judge when tempter is coming and avoid it. Use your, look at your neighbor and say, use your common sense. Sometimes I tell you, use your common sense. Use proper logic reasoning in things about life. Use your common sense. Don't let people begin to teach you things. You should think yourself and get in set, settled. Now, uh, cure. What are the cure? Time is getting scarce me, but I'll just rush through the cure. The cure is crucify the flesh. You have to crucify to Christ. You must die to Christ. You must crucify your flesh. You must die to Christ. You must die. In such a way, the things of this world must die in your mind. Your, your, the, 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 the kind of things, the things that atta, at, attract you much. Today, what's, what was more, more attractive to some people? The way they look like is more attractive. They can carry uh, a, a, an expensive phone but they cannot carry an expensive Bible. This was attracted to them. They can buy makeup and perfume and uh, everything that's upon them, or, you know, uh, whatever upon them. They can spend money on their skin. They can spend money on the perfume, their makeup kits, and their dressing, and the way they look, but they cannot spend that same money on daily mighty warrior of a hundred naira. They can't spend it. Tell them to buy it. No, they don't have it. But they can spend money on recharge card more than that. Now, that means the person what, has actually backslidden. He's, he has yielded to temptation. He has getting the hold to temptation and he's falling away. So, you discover that the tempter will always paint things of this world better and glorious than the things of the kingdom. The tempter will make you to feel that the flesh, the things of physical things are more glorious. Now, how will the tempter, the tempter come? Look, look at a man who wants to get married to a lady. He will always look at the physical thing or a woman. Look, wanting to get married to a, a man, he will look at the physical look of the man. And that is what the tempter will do, do. Say, what is the man six feet height? What is the kind of lady he wants to marry this height? And this is the kind of complexion I want. This is the kind of one I want. And the physical thing, the Bible says physical things are temporary. I've seen people who marry handsome man but never enjoy their home. I've also seen people who marry a, a, a beautiful wife but never enjoy anything called relationship. See what they are falling outside is like a monkey but the one they have is a, is, is a queen. But why? Because they are not enjoying everything. It is not marriage and relationship. It's not the half glamour, how good looking you are. Uh -huh. Even the more good looking you are, some people even become more afraid. Am I right? Yeah, and you should look at that that way. So let us be more careful and focus on the things of the spirit that benefit us and not yield to the tempter. Because the tempter will always destroy us. Now, you see, see, in the situation of world, when life, are, a lot of things are happening in this world, what do we do? We should make sure we focus on God. Now, we should, number two, number two I say number one, crucify the flesh. Number two, two determination. Determine 
to resist the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. There is nobody too big that the devil cannot tempt. Temptation will come. Temptation came on Jesus Christ. You think you cannot be tempted? Even if you like, fast and pray, temptation will come. Sometimes, the minute you finish your temptation, that's when the temptation will even come on. The minute you finish your fasting and prayer, that's when the temptation will come even bigger. Temptation will come no matter who you are. Whether you, be, whether you are a reverend, whether you are a bishop, whether you are a prayer warrior, even if G Jesus Christ was tempted, the Bible says, he was tempted in every way. So who are you who cannot be faced with temptation in every way? Our pastor and our geo, our daddy, everybody, our old people, old men, old women, no matter how old you are. You will still face temptation. Say, this one cannot be facing. It's, it's, it's a papa. It's a, it's a daddy. It's, it's 56, 70 years, 80 years old, 100 years old. He will still face temptation. Now, this one is a small girl. It's, it's just 14 years old girl. It's a 14 years old boy. They face temptation. So, no one who will not face temptation. But we should not give room to the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Friends, resist it. Determined to stand in the midst of the tempter. Determined to stand, stand in the midst of when the devil tries to draw you away. Sometimes the devil throws and say, Why don't you change church? Why don't you change church? Why don't you go to that church? Why don't you do this one? Why don't you go for a prayer meeting? Why don't you go to that prophet? He is a tempter. I, I, as long as I know my life as a child of God, I have never gone to anybody because they see vision. Because vision is not the reality of God's word. Because vision is not what rules the world. What rules the world, the world is the Bible, the word of God. And some people will be running from this place because they see vision. And somebody see vision for you, be saying, I have never been shaken with vision of anybody. Who tells I don't have vision from people? People tell me dangerous vision. Some say vision that I'm going to die. Some say vision that some, uh, somebody in my house will die. Some say same vision that I will get accident. Some say, give me, they give me vision. But as soon as you tell me vision, I leave you. I forget you and I don't. There was a time somebody gave one. I wanted to give the person money. And it's a prophet. I want to give the person money for, because I like giving pastor money. Because each time I give pastor money, I get blessed. Each time I get even when they, Even when I know they are bigger and richer, 100% richer than me, but I still bless them. Because the more I give them, God bless me. The more I, sometimes I send tight to them, the more God bless them. When I give the cash. So this one came and he saw a, he saw a vision to me saw a vision to me. And the money I wanted to give him was already in my pocket. As soon as he finished his vision, I said, is that so? I hold the money in my pocket. I said, this one, you cannot disappear from my pocket. I will never give to this prophet. And when he finished, I said, have you finished? He said, yes. I walked away. I never even said bye-bye. Because I never said thank you. Because if I say thank you, it means I accept the vision. Am I right? I don't want to embarrass him because he's a man of God, he's a big man of God, so I don't want to embarrass him. So I just said, are you true? Yes, sir. Are you true, sir? He said, yes. I walked away. He saw me look at me and I said, I walked away. I did not look back. Enter that side. The money I wanted to give, I put in. Now, because what? See, don't let people's vision rule you. We may be in church. Somebody can say, see a dream about you or see vision about you in the church, within the church. Don't let that vision rule you. If you say, hold it to yourself. And walk, and walk away. Hold it to yourself. Don't let them invite you to a place where they see vision. Because if, you, because if they see, I see people in home have been torn apart because of vision and revelation which they saw for people. And uh, whatever, whatever. Somebody the other time went to a place say, it's your husband, that is, it's your wife that's making you to be poor. And I say, eh, my own wife, my own wife that is making me poor. He so it's a witch. He yes, yeah, a witch. He has confronted in the covenant that you will never be poor. He said, hey, no wonder you should dream one dream. He went and drive his wife. And that is why the scatter problem home, start at home. Please don't be, don't let the tempter destroy you. Stay by the word of God, obey God's scripture, and you become who God wants you to do. Now, the, on that cure to uh, to the to to temptation is self deny Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. Make up your mind. Then the last one is. Let the word of God rule you. Give yourself constantly to the word of God. Listen to God's word. Don't listen to man's man's ideology. It's the word of God that is so powerful. And the only way to overcome the tempter is to be rich in God's word and quote the word of God to resist the devil. And Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil. Giving, devil was giving Jesus suggestion. 
devil was giving Jesus suggestion and saying, yeah, if you are, if you, if you, if you truly you are a son of social person, like some of the devil will say, devil may also tempt you. If you truly, you, in a Sodogba, he's a man of God. Okay, let this thing happen now. Devil will be tempting you. Let this one happen now. When this thing happen, ah, I said this, in a Sodogba is not a man of God. Ah, this thing never happened. The tempter is the one tempting you and you fell into temptation. And if he's truly here, let this one. And Jesus Christ was tempted to say, if you truly, you are a son of God. If you truly, God is true. Let this one happen. Jesus was able to detect that this one, what? It's what tempted her. And he quoted the word of God. It is written, tempt not. Don't tempt God. And the devil overcome. See, you can overcome the tempter by being rich of the word of God. That's why when, when I see people who don't come to Bible studies, who don't come to church on Thursdays to receive God's word, I see people who are free on Wednesday morning and they don't come for Wednesday faith clinic. Whether pastor is around or pastor is not around, whether I'm around, because the word of God is coming from God. It's not coming from a vessel. It could be a vessel. Whosoever is standing on the altar is the word is coming from God. Whether Sunday says, or Thursday or Monday Bible study on Thursday is the God's word. It, when you are rich in the word of God, you see, you, you, you begin to start to overcome the devil. I believe that from today, you will overcome the devil. Tempter will not rule you again. Can you stand on your feet and pray? Open your mouth. Now, I want you to open your mouth and talk to God and ask God, say, God Almighty, deliver me from the tempter. Anywhere I'm passing test, help me to, over, to stand in the midst of test. Anywhere I'm passing through persecution, help me to stand. Anywhere I'm passing through temptation, help me to st stand. Open your mind and begin to pray about it. And God, help me in the midst of trials, in the midst of temptation. Give me the power to overcome. I, I, I want to give myself to Satan any longer. Lord, let the yoke of the enemy be broken from my life. Oh, Lord... I, I will not, I will not, I will not, oh God. Give me victory, give me victory. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes God tells you something. There are some of you, God will tell you something. Go and preach to this person. Go and invite, invite some, this person to go. And you will disobey. In Jesus' name. I speak for the weak. I'm an advocate for the young. I'm more than a conqueror I'm a child of covenant It's my time to laugh Cause I have conquered it all Impossible is nothing Impossible is nothing